I'm Jess Lenore for The Real News Network. This is part two of our conversation with Bill Curry. He's a columnist for Salon.com, and he was White House con counselor to President Clinton. Thanks so much for joining us again, Bill. Pleasure. So, Bill, um, we talked about um, the Republican side in, in the first part of our conversation, but I wanted to talk about Bernie Sanders. What's, what the future may hold for his campaign? Um, he was defeated in all the contests on Tuesday by Hillary Clinton, but he's still, um, he's still in the race. He's only down by some 300 delegates. Um, there's still a large amount of superdelegates which have pledged loyalty to Clinton but can vote however they want. They're not beholden to voters or anyone else. Um, so one of the challenges that Sanders is going to face now is just getting his message out. A lot of the corporate media has kind of, have already kind of ruled him out. Um, they didn't pay much attention to him in the first place. But for example, last night, uh, none of the major networks carried his speech um, while you know, they carried every other major candidate's speech. So talk about what you hope he does um, in the coming weeks and months. Well, it, first of all, there's no question. It's, it, it just got harder for him. Uh, and uh, as I said to you earlier, uh, a Sanders win in Ohio uh, would have made this a jump ball. Uh, with eight to ten states coming right up in front of him that, that demographically resemble states he's won. Uh, and Clinton, in a sense like Trump, uh, has kept, and only in this sense, I do not mean to compare them in, in very many ways, uh, for sure, but uh, they, they both keep making tactical arguments. Uh, uh, Trump opens every, speech, every rally speech with uh, ten minutes about polls and election results, and Clinton has constantly argued that simply that she's the stronger candidate, even though general election polls say otherwise, even though her performance often stays, says otherwise. She's been able to unite her party, including even all the major progressive organizations, organized labor, uh, the Human Rights uh, Campaign Fund, and NARAL, and, and Planned Parent, uh, most of the African-American leadership, have all gone out and banded together for her in a way that is really actually extraordinary, um, especially given the fact that on all of those issues, with the arguable exception of choice, a Sanders record is actually much stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they left their friend to go with the person they thought would win. Had Sanders done better yesterday, this would be a very different road we'd be on now because the one argument she made, I'm inevitable and I'm the one who can win, would have been shaken. It wasn't. And as you said, the other part of her coalition is the media. Uh, including uh, MSNBC, CNN, Vox, Daily Coast, etc., they really share her neoliberal worldview. When 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 the president didn't uh, introduce an, a way, uh, uh, an increase in the minimum wage in 2009, when he dropped the public option, when he didn't bail out the homeowners, when he ordered his uh, administration into radio silence on climate change in his first term, all those people gave him a pass. They barely noticed. They didn't report uh, any of it. They didn't go digging because they were brought to the Democratic Party on a different set of issues and free trade and, and economic deregulation and pay-to-play politics. They viewed those things almost as a, like a law of nature. The rules of the game of this degraded and corrupted game, they mistook for the rules of politics itself. We weren't always this corrupt. In the 50s, 60s, and 70s, this was a more honest and more just nation. It doesn't have to be this way, but they didn't see it. And so a lot of what Bernie says, when Bernie's revolution was an insult to their vanity, because they've been missing this story since forever. And, and that made it hard uh, uh, for him to, um, to get their attention, and it just got harder. Uh, when you add that the, that, that the party rigged the rules, uh, uh, he, he's not going to get a lot of more debate. He's not going to get many more forums, probably no more debates. They can't wait to shut that down. They didn't even cover his speech last night, as you pointed out. Uh, they want to move on. Uh, if you don't mind my filibustering here for one more uh, uh, piece, let me just sure. say this. The idea that he's been bad for her or that he's driven her to the left is ridiculous. If it weren't for Bernie Sanders, you know, before she felt the heat from Bernie, she was for the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership. Mm -hmm. I think she still is. But she at least had to move some of the pawns on her side of the chessboard. She, she called the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership the gold standard of trade agreements. Mm -hmm. She spent her, her time as Secretary of State traveling the world promoting fracking. 
giving countless speeches encouraging countries to engage in more fracking. She was just barely chased off the, uh, the, the Keystone Pipeline. She just said she'd leave fracking to the, to the governors, the very governors she wouldn't trust to do health care and Obamacare, rightly. She wants to treat fracking as a state's rights issue. If, that, if that's what you want to do, you don't get climate change. You're not seeing what's happening. These are big, big issues. And the fact that Bernie's been able to push her as far as he has, has helped her. And he's, pardon me, not, he's, 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 excuse me, he's, he's, he's not pushing her to the left. He's pushing her to Washington's left, but America's center. Mm -hmm. the, the, this is where the country on, on trade, on living wage, on universal health care, on single payer. The last uh, Kaiser Family Foundation poll, 5838, I believe, I believe were the numbers, but approximately that, America already supports uh, 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 Medi Medicare for all, single payer. Right. And, and Bill, so and, I want to ask Party you. By, and the Democratic Party by two to one. They're about to shut down the debate mm -hmm. that's been leading them to where the country is. Uh, and that's too bad. The good news for Bernie is that uh, uh, the, the debates are a loss, uh, but there are other ways to reach his base and to keep on winning and to keep this fight going. And I think it's I think it's critically important for the country that people not give up on this race. And the idea that that, that Hillary would be better off, that the Democrats would be better off, and that the country would be better off if she could just wind up Bernie's affairs and move on to the general election. The, the evidence we have all says the opposite. And so I wanted to ask you about that because, you know, after the high that many of Sanders supporters felt in Michigan, you could kind of feel the deflation last night as, uh, you know, some of the polls showed him ahead in Illinois. And, um, you know, there's many close races. Um, so so what, what next steps should, uh, should Sanders supporters take? Um, you know, you've talked about, uh, you know, building a movement rather than a political revolution is what Sanders has been calling for. I think there's look. look I, I I've said throughout this, and sometimes some of Bernie's supporters haven't I, I haven't been so happy to hear it. The the question here isn't just who's nominated in this election. There is a revolution going on. Whether the revolution's calendar and the election's calendar sync up precisely, we that may not be the case. Uh, revolutions are seldom con conducted in ninety days. Uh, the Republican Party. One of the reasons their theirs has gone further is that their base began revolting six years ago when the Tea Party was formed. They began chipping away at the power of their hierarchy. Uh, and, and the oddity is that the Democrat on the Democratic side, if you think about it for a moment, the Democratic base has much deeper divisions with its leadership. The Republican base and the Republican leaders are actually very, very close. They're really just angry at them because they couldn't beat Obama senseless. All right. It's not really over deep divisions on issues. The Democratic base has real divisions on issues uh, with its leadership, but 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 actually loves their leaders because of the charisma of Obama and Clinton. All those divisions have been papered over, and because we won the presidency, you know, for for those two reasons. And but but in fact, I believe that that the change coming on the Democratic side is every bit as great, and probably greater. Than the change coming the Republican side, and the Bernie Sanders campaign right now is at the heart of this, and and so there's two things that I would say in response to your question. One is to the is is to the volunteer base of the Sanders campaign. What do you do next? What you were going to do anyway if you'd won. You wake up the next morning and you continue to fight, and and you shake this thing off. The biggest mistake people make in politics. Is, is mistaking a, a, the present moment for a permanent condition. Uh, everything looks different tomorrow. Everything looks different in a week. If he comes back and wins three races, uh, they may still write him off, but they'll have to put his speech on TV that night. And, uh, and so you begin to reconstruct this thing. Let's say that the, 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 that the Clinton uh, uh, fatalists and inevitableists are all correct. Bernie would still show up at this convention if he does as well as as I think he can do in these states, and, and without exceeding expectations, he'd show up at that convention with 40% of the delegates. Uh, in our lives, in, in the last um, uh, 56 years since the JFK convention in Los Angeles in 1960, uh, uh, only three people have come close to that. Uh, uh, Gary Hart, 
uh, Jesse Jackson and Teddy Kennedy, and then Teddy Kennedy in 1980, all showed up with about 30, between 30 and 34 uh, percent. Bernie would have the biggest second place finish, uh, oh, excuse me, except for Hillary, uh, but who, uh, uh, who ran the closest race in the history of either party for president in 2008. Uh, but Bernie would be showing up with 40 percent. And unlike Teddy and Jesse and especially Gary Hart, he wouldn't just want to be giving a speech. He'd want he'd care about the, the, the platform and not only the platform, but what goes on uh, beyond us. And it, it, w one of the lessons of this experience has been that the progressive part of the Democratic Party establishment has been made such a lapdog of the establishment itself. It is so overrun by Washington-based technicians and careerists who ought to ask themselves how much their access to these Democratic Party leaders has really done for the people that they purport to represent. What happened in the last generation is that the vast independent grassroots progressive movements that were the engines of all of our uh, progressive change really became Washington lobbies with really good grassroots mailing lists. And that's not the same as being a democratically structured independent movement. And I believe that the greatest and most troublesome story of the last 25 years hasn't been the rise of the right, but the implosion of the left. And that it was the women's movement, and it was the Ralph Nader and the consumer movement. It was the nuclear freeze movement, of which I was privileged to be a, run the political action committee back in the 1980s. It was the civil rights movement. And we missed that kind of independence. Whatever happens now, if we've learned anything, it is that only this kind of sustained pressure moves people like Clinton to a real consideration of the economic interests of working families. They feel it in their hearts. They think they're already doing plenty. They resent us for not being more grateful for what they have done. Uh, but this is a party that, in fact, uh, will, in order to please its business donors, not raise the minimum wage, even though they have the votes, as in 2009. This is a party that will, will as both the president and Hillary have done, we get in bed with the insurance and pharmaceutical industries so that we can't even negotiate for fair drug prices and we can't take all the paperwork costs so that our small businesses, our self-employed, our middle-aged, the vast swaths of millions of people, including many who have insurance, we have health care. Well, Bill Curry, uh, columnist for Salon.com, he was White House counselor to President Clinton. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us at The Real News Network.